I am Mike Stanton. It's May 14th. This is the BAM Weekly Muni Market Update. I'm here with Grant Dewey and David Young from BAM's Capital Markets Desk. Gentlemen, thanks for being here. Uh, Grant, we got our first kind of look at the inflation picture as the recovery starts to kick into gear. Uh, some of the readings were higher than expected. That led to marginally higher rates. Uh, what's the market doing in response? Yeah, you know, it's been an interesting week. There's been some conflicting data. We definitely saw a little bit more rate volatility, uh, which is really not that surprising given some of what you referenced. But it, I would say a lot of it really doesn't help paint uh, a clear picture on the economic outlook. So whether you're you know, an inflation hawk or, or you align closer with like the Fed's outlook on the economy. Uh, you know, there's plenty of data that you can find that kind of helps support your <laughs> your own position. So you had, uh, you know, I think everybody agrees there's been plenty of sort of stimulus to help reinflate the U.S. economy, and you know we'll have pretty staggering kind of Q2 GDP growth uh, from pretty depressed levels. Uh, I think a lot of people are calling for more than 10 percent. Um, and, uh, and then you saw, you know, CPI numbers, especially CPI and PPI, uh, you know, that clearly support higher rates and, and helps kind of stoke the inflation fears that you talked about. We saw uh, the equity market, the rate sensitive names trade off and, and also the bond market. But, you know, on the, um, on the other hand, you, you saw this morning negative retail sales numbers, uh, it doesn't really fit the narrative uh, you, you, um, uh, and even you know, job growth, if you go back to a week ago, job growth was well uh, uh, less than what people anticipated. So uh, the point is there seems to be a lot of conflicting data. I think there clearly is a trend towards higher rates, uh, but there seems to be a little bit more volatility that's come into the market. And, and you know, that's been uh, good for our business. Um, the uh, you had um, uh, munis, you know, continue to have a lot of good news built in. You have ratios um, as Treasury sold off a little bit this week. Muni ratios improved to just about sixty percent. I think, given all the positive credit fundamentals and and uh, and the technicals, or money continues to come in. You know, I do think that it's uh, pretty sensible that you have muni ratios. Uh, in that 60%. So the market seems to be in good shape. I think there is a trend to higher rates. It'd be you know, hard, um, I think, you know, hard to argue that, uh, uh, that you know, rates aren't going to trend higher into that 175, 2% on the 10-year, uh, but we'll see. Right, and some of those technical factors are hard to read because the uh, schedule for tax payments this year is just so different than historical trends. Uh, taxes are due uh, next Monday. And so uh, trying to figure out how people are adjusting to that uh, also is a forecasting challenge for people, I would assume. Of course. So David, what did we see in the new issue market? I think last week's uh, calendar was uh, still very manageable. What uh, kind of transactions stood out? Yeah, so uh, taking a look at this week, uh, we had a, uh, you know, as you said, a manual supply. Um, it was estimated around $7 billion, and that's what we got. Um, the feedback that we've been hearing uh, is that deals are getting a little bit harder, um, with the market tone uh, not as strong. Um, you know, Grant mentioned, uh, you know, uh, ratios at around 60%, and we saw the big cut to MMD scale on Wednesday following those inflation numbers. Um, and kind of the other side of that is that we're, we're hearing that buyers are kind of reaching this point of fatigue, um, given where, you know, the rates and, and spread and ratios are. Um, so, you know, that's kind of the market tone. Uh, but, in, you know, for us, it was uh, kind of steady as she goes. We had about 300 million in par um, that was led by a uh, hundred million dollar Rhode Island Health and Educational Building Corporation for the city of Providence. Um, that was a state enhanced rating of AA3. Um, and the feedback we got from that deal was um, it did very well, uh, kind of four to five times oversubscribed. Uh, and then another deal um, that's kind of noteworthy is the $37 million Wichita, Wichita uh, water and sewer in Kansas. Um, and that was AA minus. Um, so, you know, we're still seeing these kind of higher rated uh, deals come with insurance and, you know, that's something uh, that we like and uh, kind of where the market is, we, we kind of expect to see going forward. 
Um, and then I'll just kind of uh, talk about next week. Uh, we will see, or at least we expect to see supply kind of pick up um, to about 9 billion, uh, still manageable, relatively speaking. Um, and of that 9 billion, 2 billion is really coming from three deals, uh, you know, a billion Connecticut geos. Um, but, you know, for us, we'll have a very active week, um, about 525 million scheduled to price in the negotiated market. Um, we have the $270 million UC Davis student housing deal. And that one, as you know, Mike, is Bam Green Star. Um, we have the $80 million Cuyahoga Falls School District in Ohio, um, a $50 million Southern Illinois University, and a $32 million Perth Amboy in New Jersey. And David, I think you touched on something important, which, you know, in Providence and Wichita being in the AA category, you know, in the secondary side of things, uh, we also have seen, you know, a big uptick, our business this year, you know, uh, more than 50% of our secondary business has been in higher rated names. It's partly uh, due to the tighter credit spreads. Uh, that's uh, where uh, it's made sense. But I think that really has been the main contributor to penetration rates up kind of piercing up through the 8%, uh, which is what we've seen so far this year. Or so. Um, uh, we're just seeing you know, a, a much greater share of those names, which is um, uh, which is heartening. Great insight. And viewers should stay tuned to BAM's YouTube channel on Monday. We'll have a couple of Credit Insights videos on upcoming transactions. We'll be featuring that Southern Illinois University transaction, as well as one for the city of Gray Forest, Texas, which is selling gas revenue bonds uh, that have some interesting insights uh, in fallout from the storms earlier this year. So uh, stay tuned to BAM's uh, YouTube channel for those during the week. And we'll be back with next week's weekly update and uh, give you an update on how these other transactions priced. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, Frank. When the market is unpredictable, BAM gives you certainty. In the face of market volatility and illiquidity, BAM insured municipal bonds deliver default protection, value preservation, and a durable AA rating from S&P. BAM's insurance protects against everything that causes a default, and adding BAM insured municipal bonds to your portfolio is easy. Talk to your investment advisor, visit buildamerica.com, or look for BAM eligible bonds on the Perform Portfolio Management System. BAM. Build America Mutual.